join me as your host, Roderick Swift, every Wednesday, Musicians Matters Podcast, live right here at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Positive Power, 21 Christian Media, LLC. Let's go! If you missed Drum Clinic Uncut last week, it was off the chain. Do we have a guest here for you tonight? His name is Christopher Rogers. Let's welcome Christopher Rogers. What's going on, Chris? That's playing. Hey, what's going on, Swift? <laughs> not too much. Not too much. How's your day today, bro? Ah, oh, very adventurous, man. I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for having me here. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Tell us a little bit about yourself, my brother. Ah, oh, well, I'm six one, two hundred ninety pounds, athletic, built like a oh, walking Oh, it out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, it's not that kind of uh, interview. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Uh, no, man. Uh, man, I don't know how to start. I, you know, you're not used to, you know, a humble guy like me. You're not used to mm-hmm. edifying yourself. And it's, it's been <laughs> it's been quite a fun journey. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I um, and then I'm forty. I'm still beating on stuff. Uh, I've been doing it at a young age. Grew up in a church. Um, that's where it all started. Watched my cousins play and just been fascinated. Um, the sound of the kick, you know, cool, unique drumsticks, whatnot. Um, man, I just had a passion. My father gave me a drum set when I was seven years old. And I'm beating on that thing. I still have it to this very day. I treat it like a 64 classic, you know, and I actually call it the classic, the Pearl Export. And uh, I still play with that um, here and there. And, yeah, man, it's just drums. Been my passion for a very long time. I just thank God for the gift. I give the glory to him. Um, it's helped me pay bills. It's like my uh, additional stream of income. <laughs> amen, so, amen, amen. Amen. So is your approach to music um, straightforward, or do you have a strategy? My approach, um, I look at it as a professional job, career. I mean, you got to have, you know, etiquette, stage etiquette, um, professionalism. Sometimes, you know, it's not always about the chops. Um, It's, there's politics involved in just playing the drums. You know, if there's a venue, don't play too loud. If, you know, there's an artist that love to sing, you don't want to chop over them. Um, so you ask the artist, you know, they adhere to their instructions. You want to play fancy? How do you want more or less here and there? Um, and, yeah, and I, I take it very serious. Uh, you know, you read music, um, practice at home i'm always learning a lot of young musicians out there they got different chops so i stay up to date i don't want to be dated um so i always stay up to date with chops here and there when i need it it's there um but other than that man it's good to have catalog not just stick to one genre you know rock pop r&b neo soul i mean you know artists ask me all the time um you know like hey what do you play it's like everything anything that's got to be let me play. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. I noticed that you can play like anything. Um, I, I noticed when you play, you, you put your heart in everything that you do, you know, like, um, um, when we first, uh, when we first met, um, I met you basically at, um, this one church off of, uh, Cheyenne. You remember that? Ah, uh-huh. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Cheyenne, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. She was awesome. You was um, um, it, it was it, it, it was amazing. And um, uh, I seen you at your first, uh, not your first gig, but your first session that I seen with you. That was years ago. 
And look yeah, at no. you now. Yeah. Look at you now. You you you, you like uh, basically. I can't even. I gotta basically put a uh, um, a call a call in or put appointment in just to to uh, see if I can um, get you. <laughs> Man, I just, I'm, I'm not that busy. You know I'm there or whatever is the call. But, yeah, um, I use appointments just because I have bad memory and I have so much music in my head. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I need to have this on a calendar of facing me somewhere. <laughs> that's true. That's so, true. That's true. <laughs> this, this, but, yeah. My brother, did this past two years, um, like, as far as the pandemic, did it ever affect you? Man... Um, that's funny you said that. That's a testimony within itself. Um, when the COVID hit, yes, I had a venue, um, a residential, uh, with my fellows in that tour band at, uh, Classic Jewel. Thank you. Big shout outs to Jerome. Um, big shout outs to Randy at Corky Thorn. Um, you know, those were pioneers through the pandemic that, you know, they played by the rules and, you know, stayed within the limits and gave us musicians a shot. Um, keep a steady home active. Um, but then, yeah, when it, when the breakdown hit and even the churches hit and there's musicians out there, you know, they get paid. My Levi's shout out to y'all. Um, the churches got hit too. And so it was a quiet minute, but then there was, there was just a surge of, you know, everybody's like, wait a minute, don't we pray sickness out in the altar? Um, and you know what I said? For those radical churches out there, I made a public announcement. I put it on Facebook. Normally, I don't put it like, hey, I'm available. But I put it on their Facebook. Um, hey, if any church is keeping their door open, I am going to extend my services for free. And a few churches called. Um, kept me playing, personally. I love it. Um, but... For those churches that were radically still, you know, displaying their faith in God uh, and keeping open, despite, you know, like, I mean, we preach the Bible, right? And miracles happen in the Bible, and, you know, people are like, well, you got to be safe and all that. And I'm like, well, hey, listen. Hey, I believe the stories that's in the Bible. I don't know about you. Um, and not right. knocking anybody who don't. Um, but, you know, I just, I serve an awesome God. That when I did that, after the pandemic hit, I must have been the most busiest musician. Uh, well, I'm not going to say busiest. You know, shout out to you know the other drummers out there that constantly work that tour. Um, I have a nine to five, <laughs> and I got two kids. Right. Um, <laughs> so I turned down a lot of gigs, and I, I recommend people who won't, you know hinder my name um, through recommendation, but I, I stayed busy locally, traveled uh, within the continental U.S., <laughs> and That's right. God has blessed me um, tremendously after making that sacrifice. You know, obedience is better than sacrifice. You know, you hear that scripture all the time, uh, but when I gave that sacrifice, that offering to God, use my gift unto God for God, and for those who are pioneering, who were the radicals during that shutdown, during the pandemic, um, God has blessed me tremendously. It, I mean, when you say the scriptures uh, say more than abundantly, um, that has literally happened where I could not manage. Well, I'm not saying I can't manage, but I could not say yes to everybody. I literally had to pass them down. They're like, no, Chris, we want you. I'm like, hey, but this guy, he's, He's better than me, <laughs> you know. He's, you right. know, he's the best, best thing. He's, you know, uh, I got to upsell, edify them, you know. Um, but you know, I I thank God and I appreciate those who kept me working, who gave me a call. You didn't have to. There's a million drummers out there, um, and I always stay humble and you stay passionate. Uh, and I remember a guy said, "Man, you're like a Tupac of drummers." I was like, "What does that mean?" He's like, "Man, you're passionate. You're not the most." <laughs> You know, I'm not a, you know, Tony Russell Jr. or anything like that, <laughs> you know, but right, right. I play with passion. <laughs> I, my, 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 my pocket is there, and I got some spadazzle here and there. I said spadazzle on this there. Oh, my gosh. But anyways, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I, 
that that's just me. Um, I I listen to the music. I pay attention to the nuances and all that, and I try to you know incorporate that on in my drum kits. You know, having stacks here, blocks here, chimes there. I'm like, man, you got a whole percussion, or this what drummers are. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, I just, that's what kept me working, man. Keep my faith in God and sacrificing here and there for God. Um, man, just, and just stay in tune, man. It's, that was fun. Man, that was a fun period. <laughs> Amen. A shot to, shots out to, um, Captain Free Christian Center and, uh, Fresh Wind, uh, Ministries, um, Pastor Holiday. Hi, yeah, Pastor Andre. Yeah, Pastor <laughs> Holiday and Pastor uh, Kelker for keeping their doors open. Um, Woo! I got and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that was a situation, you know. So I just shouts out to them too. Uh, Man, shout out you? to Pastor uh, Josephus uh, over there at Kingdom Power, keeping the doors up. Uh, freedom, man. Mm-hmm. Um, overflow. Man, mm-hmm. I mean, we appreciate you guys. Uh, Church LV, love y'all. Calvary Chapel, love y'all. And, you know, it's not That's just, right. uh, you know, the black community churches. It's the contemporary, the mixed crowd. You know, there's a lot of churches out there that stuck it out and said, hey, <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but this Bible right here says I can make it. And here we are. That's right. That is right. I, that and is. it was a funny thing. I never caught COVID. Oh my God! I can't even shut it all out. Oh, I never got COVID. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Man, I got it. God is glory. I never and, and, and it's risky. You know, I'm a father, single father, got two girls. It's risky going out there in public, and people see me. You know, sometimes I don't. I'm not too, you know, exposed. I'm just like out there. I play. I break down. And I head out that back door. <laughs> I was like, I can't mm-hmm. jump there, y'all. <laughs> exactly. Don't love me. Exactly. <laughs> there is. But I've never got well, coming. I've never got coming. There is a God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, and I think it was because of that sacrifice that I did for God. You know, I've been sick here and there. But medically, you know, get the test results back every time it's been negative. I'm like, wow. God. Thank you. Yes, that's, that's a blessing. All and stuff. <laughs> that's, a, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. And who inspired you to go for, forward in your um, music um, uh, um, movement? Who inspired you when you first started? When I first, first started? Oh, yeah, man, you know, L.A. Man. family, big ups. Y'all know Tony Shoemate. Uh, my cousin, man, one of the baddest drummers, he's, <laughs> it wasn't Marvin McQuitty that, uh, made me want to wear drum gloves, but you know, I, I'm a little bit overweight, so my hands get sweaty, but, but, but who inspired me to wear gloves was my cousin, Tony. He used to have these black gloves and I was like, dad, he's about to murder these drums. And every time he never failed. <laughs> Watching my cousin, yeah. Tony Shumay was like watching Kobe Bryant play the drum, you know, it was like Kobe Bryant play. Or somebody, somebody great, you know, you know, just playing the gifts. It's passionate, you know, his passion, his pocket, his hit, his drive, you know, it was, and my cousin actually inspired me. I got a few cousins that actually inspired me. Mason Didri, I appreciate now. Um, mm-hmm. my, my dad's side of the family, through marriage and all that. Um, Jerome, my dad, uh, through marriage. Um, those guys related to some, some cool people. Um, but yeah, man, I just, my family keeps me inspired. Keeps me inspired. Amen. They're Amen. still playing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm gonna give shots out to um, um, Maestro David Blakely because uh, when I was yeah, uh, my mama used to sing with him back in the St. Paul yeah, Choir, Cubs yeah, Choir. <laughs> yes, yes. Back in the days, matter matter of fact, he's in Ohio right now um, at the Ames Convention, Kojic um, Ames Convention. He's right there and. Um, uh, he, he's right there in the aim right now as we speak. Oh, yeah. Shout out, shout out to um, Eagle Eye Shields. Um, he he shot, um, and he, he taught me how to read music back in the days. So um, oh, I good. take that to heart. And shout out to my uncle, um, William B. Mason. They say uh, I look just like him. He he taught me how to play the drums. You know, come to think about it, that's crazy. Yeah, you do. 
Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. nothing. I'm just yeah. saying. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right, this is okay. What? I'll cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> what is the, check it out. Check it out, fellas. What is the best advice that you would ever give a musician? Young or anybody? Sure. Anybody? anybody. A, you can a go universal. Do, do it young, advice. and you can do the young, the the old, and the mature. Do it all. Don't take your gift for granted. Mm -hmm. um, respect the gig and respect your gift. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's coming from you know watching musicians have tremendous talent and then waste it off on politics. Um, they waste it off on abusing their bodies, their mind, um, and even their craft, you know, stay working out, but also mm -hmm. remember, you know, if you're going to do this professionally, you know, res respect the game. Um, don't be the musician that nobody wants to call because you're hard to work with or you're showing up late or you don't have your own instruments or you underbid somebody. Now you had a reputation of being the, the cheap musician and you water down the whole music game. Now everybody's playing for $25. <laughs> um, but God bless you. That's but, true. Um, that's that's, uh, yeah, it's just got to respect the game, respect your craft, respect yourself, respect the artist. Um, because, you, if, you know, you, if you take a look on my social media page, Christopher Rogers, um, Instagram, Chris underscore Rogers underscore drum dad, that was my little weak plug. No, <laughs> no but uh, yeah, I never, <laughs> I never bashed a gig. I never bashed an artist. I never bashed another musician. I never called another musician trash. You never caught me in that circle, bad mouthing another fellow musician. Um, because God will make a, make room f on the table for me, regardless. Yes, sir. And I'd rather see other musicians succeed. So they don't be looking at my pocket like, what are you doing? No, I want you to get your own, brother. <laughs> here, right, right. You can go here and play. <laughs> That's how That's I right. am, man. I keep a low profile, and I like to uplift everybody. But, yeah, um, not just saying, be like me. I'm not a perfect person, not at all. Um, you know, sometimes you got to be crude in this business. Uh, you mm -hmm. got to be direct. You got to be stern. You have to say up. Sometimes you got to say no. You got to have a pocket full of no's, and not everybody appreciates appreciates a no. Um, you say a pocket man, full no's, of no's. no's, a pocket full of no's. I didn't say a whole bag full of no's. I'm gonna tell everybody no. Then you ain't gonna be working. Um, but no, sometimes you got to stand up for what you believe. <laughs> you just gotta, yeah, do the right thing out there, fellas, ladies. You know. Never give up, man. I remember somebody told me, it's like, man, you're too old to play. I was like, I don't need to be around you. Keep your circle That's right. positive. That's right. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. I was at a, I was at a Frank Sinatra show out here in Vegas, and I saw this guy, very, very mature. It had to be in the 70s, 80s. He was having the time of his life on the drums. And I'm, I'm, I'm divorced. And I told my wife at the time, I was like, that's going to be me one day. That's probably what she loves. Exactly. Like, oh, heck no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, exactly. <laughs> I was like, I'm still be playing at the age of 80. And man, those guys, you know, they probably sit nice. That's probably his last only committed gig. You know, those guys get a nice shit because those tickets are like 200 something dollars. <laughs> 200 something dollars. Exactly. <laughs> man, I was like, huh. Well, one day. Yeah. Check it Monday. out. I'm still at, it, at, at the age of 50. Man, man, I, man. Blessings to you, man. Hats off to you, Swift. And you're still killing it. The drum clinic, man, you're still doing it out there, man. And, man, keep inspiring those young drummers, man. Man, yeah. everybody. Man, you, you're still doing it. When's the next one, man? I got to be at the next one. The next one we're going to have it is going to be in um, January. 
So why is he gonna um, be twenty third? Oh my gosh! Instead of, instead of us doing it, um, see, um, every once every year, they're asking us to do it like every six months. Okay. So, okay. Um, um, we're in the, we're in the process of working out on that right now as we speak. Um, every six months. So um, um, look for us um, July, no, excuse me, January 2023. Mm-hmm. 23rd. Name one yeah. of your favorite songs, bro. It could be gospel. Give us one of your gospel favorite songs. And one of, uh, it, it can be one of your secular uh, favorite songs. Because I know you do not just play uh, gospel. You play uh, all uh, all the music. So you play that heathen worldly music, that heathen music, <laughs> the secular music. <laughs> well, that's, that's that gospel. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I I play work music. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, but uh, no. What I oh, man, I don't have. And y'all, y'all gonna laugh at me because I have like a peculiar taste of music because I listen to everything. I listen to Metallica, I listen to uh, man, just Bonnie James and all, all the way over here to, uh, let's say Prince, let's say, you know, you know, your populars, Robert Glasper's, you, you know, I, I just listen to everybody. I appreciate music, man. Bon Jovi, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, that's, it's fun to go to one of those rock uh, joint jams, those live jam sessions, and the artist always calls out a song or whatnot, and you're right there with the hits and everything. Um, I just grew up loving all kinds of music from Uh, (laughs) ACDC. I remember I fell in love with ACDC watching a movie, Maximum Overdrive. I was like, wow. Like... (laughs) Oh, and like every song was hit and I was like, Ooh. Um but yeah, I just love everything, man. I can't put one on top. Uh I had sick. I was just so That's understandable. One of mine is uh Frankie Beverly and May's uh Joint Pain. And then uh Ooh. I could listen to Yeah, uh you knew you heard that before? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, and I can you know, the gospel to the like that, he got uh, a uh he got a a, a back uh, percussion um set. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Uh and then uh, You ain't seen nothing yet. Uh Exactly. What was that? What was that? Oh my gosh. Now I can't remember. Uh, That's no. hey, everybody want to know my weakness? I am bad with names. Artist names. I'm really am. I can remember the song, but Y'all better give me a sheet with the list. <laughs> Y'all exactly. call it out. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, yo, y'all talk to, uh, to uh, Calvin Napper, bro. Um, he's uh, he's uh, T.O.P. Calvin Napper, that's um, that's um, uh, Frankie Beverly and May's um, drummer. Oh. Oh, okay. I thought we. I thought we. I was. In, I was still in church. Oh yeah, Calvin Napper plays. Yeah. Too much church. <laughs> oh Lord, did no, you go there? No, too much. <laughs> but, oh, okay, so since you stay in, since you stay in church, okay. Uh, oh no, we don't have to. We can check it out. Check it out, bro. I can listen to anything um, that uh, Ty Trebek uh, sings or play. Anything. Any key, anything. Uh, any, anything. Uh, Kiki Kiara Ki, Shear uh, sings. I can do. Anything, the Clark Sisters. I, oh my goodness! Oh, you are. Yeah, yeah. That's my favorite Kiara uh, Sheer. If you say gospel artist, maybe I can come up with a favorite song from that gospel artist. Give yeah. me one of them. Instead nah, of all right, name a gospel artist. Give me one of the gospel artists. Oh, okay. Uh, Fred Hammond. Okay. What, what, what do you like from, from him? Oh, oh! I'm giving you the name and the song. Uh, Man, I want to say Fred Heaven. I was giving you the name because I have way too many uh, from Fred Heaven. Let's just let me go to everybody. Hey, do I, yeah, I'm going to go back. I can song for you. <laughs> Are you ready? There's a miracle. Yeah, yeah. Are you that, ready? That's the gem. I can listen to that all the night. That whole album was fire, man, to tell you the truth. Yeah. I can listen to that all night long. 
So, are, oh are man, uh, here's another favorite one. So, so, so I don't have to be so predictable and saying bless. Uh, I'm gonna go with. I remember seeing <laughs> Calvin Rogers play this song. Uh, it, uh, day that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. And y'all know, nice. and all the drummers out there, y'all listening, y'all know what video I'm talking about at the end of it. When Calvin Rogers was playing, he did that crazy intro for that song. Yeah. It was, it was, yep. it was nice. It was nice. It was nice on that one. You as an artist, um, do you just put anything out there or do you <laughs> have a, pre- a preparation on it? Oh, uh, you talking about like uh, music for a show, getting the show ready? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Oh, that's a controversial ans- question, man. Um, man, let me tell you, um, what well, is huh? controversial? I mean, this is a gospel radio, but I'm gonna tell you uh, here's the secret of playing secular music. There's an assignment out there. We all know the assignment. You know, being a gospel artist. Yeah, blah 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 blah. Not blah, blah, right. blah, but uh, right. Right. I'm just, hey, y'all, I'm just going to tell you what's on my heart. But when tell you play secular heart. music, yeah. the music, the music, if you want to keep the crowd there, your job, you know, is to keep the people there. They'll invite the venue's going to invite the people there, but your job is to keep them there, keep them entertained. And the music right. that you should, in my opinion, I'll just say my opinion so I don't get crucified for my my thought. No, no, and no. There's nothing this wrong with that. Stone rule. But um, the rule is you got to have them dancing. So music mm-hmm. that makes them dance, that has mm-hmm. lyrics with them dancing and getting up, drinking, um, mm-hmm. and uh, 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 um, do we say fornication? Can we say fornication on here? Well, no. Make love, make love, making love. Okay. You say make love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if you got those, <laughs> those okay. three items on the menu for your sets, um, that's incredible. People will come to you at the end of the show and say thank you. Um, man, I've had people say I was suicidal, and uh-huh. I'm happy now. Um, uh-huh. I am rekindling my marriage. Oh, my wife loved it. Blah, blah, blah. Wow. You know, great. Where are you guys at? People remember that. And, you know, my little small assignment, when I tell them that, I was like, hey, don't tell me. Go tell the uh-huh. bar. Go tell the bar managers. That's how you help yourself network. So when they hear that push, the, uh, the venue that has you there, they book you again. Awesome. Awesome. Let's go for the spiritual aspect. Spiritual asset? I am selfish when it comes to If it was me leading praise and worship, I'm, here's my take on it. Here's my background. This is going to explain my answer. Mm-hmm. Okay, my answer is I will have probably like a concert style of all hype music for praise and worship. And then on the second half, the second hour, I will have worship. Oh. That's and some people don't understand that. Um, you say, "Why? What is praise and worship? Praise, praise! You're giving God the edification. You're saying, God, hallelujah! You're playing songs like, oh, you man, hey, because in the Bible it says that they were praising twenty four seven, nonstop. Mm-hmm. You would too if you made the list, right? But um, that's right. Yeah, I believe worship should not just be broken down. You know, sometimes. You know, when you're in the spirit and you don't want to hear the, hey, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it, right. drop it, drop it. Hey, 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 hey. Now, I want you to look at your neighbor. Now, man, let the worship go. Let it go. Somebody is Amen. combined. Somebody is going through something. And then when they're tired of praising, rest down on your knees and give God worship. And just, man, praise and worship is the intimate setting for God. Hallelujah. God wants to hear the the thank you, the praise, the the man, just just be intimate with God at that moment. Man, I don't care about the churches, you know, sometimes people say, Oh, they're doing too much, they got the fog and they're getting the lights. Yes. 
It's love time for God. <laughs> There's no Amen. money. I don't want nobody, uh, look, the sisters out there, I don't want them to see the makeup all done and the weed to the side, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah, man, just that, open up to God right money. there, man. Go all in. That is good money. Because your praise is your breakthrough. That's right. That's right. They need to hear this, Chris. You understand? They need to hear what you are saying. Good words. Damn. Damn. Don't, don't have me open up a church. Like, the pastor didn't preach. If you listen to the lyrics of the song, <laughs> we had First and Second Samuel. <laughs> we had it. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. So what uh, lessons have you learned in the music industry that you wouldn't do anymore? Oh, Oh, some mistakes? Yeah, what lessons have we have you learned in the music industry that you wouldn't do anymore? <laughs> I learned from other people's mistakes. Ooh, amen. Do that. Amen. <laughs> that is no, good uh, what else, man? That's good nuggets. Oh, man. Uh, man, I've seen people leave a stage, trashy, drinks spilled over, and I hear mm-hmm. the bar back guys say something like, man, this is the nasty, messiest um, band that we ever have. And I heard mm-hmm. the stage manager say, all right, we won't book them anymore. And I'm like, ooh. ooh. Oh, my goodness. Right. Um, and, you know, I just, I've heard, you know, I listen to and talk to, you know, the bartenders and stuff like that. What's important to them? Um, oh, man. This is a secret weapon. Mm-hmm. When it comes to secular, sometimes it's good to fill the seats, but what's uh-huh. important to what's important to those secular gigs that drinks are being bought. So uh-huh. it's okay if you want to fill the seats and jer- invite your uh, church family, uh, but the church family is not going to keep you that gig. Uh-huh. That's one thing I learned. You know, I want to okay. show up a Bible study and hand out flyers. Like, hey, uh, for those who's backsliding, I want to come over here over Wednesday. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but, yeah, invite your coworkers. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, friends out in the streets that you have a hard time inviting the church, invite them to your gig and stuff like that. <laughs> right, so far as the church, you know, um, just be together. That's that's what I learned. Just you know, just just be on one accord. You know, you know, not, not uh, backbiting. That's one thing I do not like is backbiting. Um, yeah, that's the politics. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. It's it, don't do it. It, it's it, not worth. It will not. It will not not uh, get you to the the place that you're supposed to be as a Christian. Uh, just be yourself be uh yeah, be yourself called, be who god has called you to be you know uh that's basically what i learned so uh as far as the, the next situation question do you like uh lend your equip- equipment out nope 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 no no no, I was that humble Christian guy that says, go ahead, yeah, if you need symbols, you need symbols. Man, I don't want to have to hunt nobody down, break somebody's arm because you didn't pay me for my symbols, man. Mm-hmm. You know you right. cracked it. Man, slide over a couple of hundreds at this symbol cost. Otherwise, we're going to have a beef. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I don't like lending out of my stuff. Um, not everybody appreciates their stuff like you do. Right. Nobody's going to appreciate your stuff like you do. That's that's a better way to put it. I'll let somebody my drums. I got busted toms. They may not have mm-hmm. great stick playment. They might be playing with some two Bs, metal two Bs, or something like that. And your cymbals are all cracked and stuff like that. Next thing you know, your office equipment is out of commission. Right. You notice what I said, office equipment. This is my livelihood. You're, that's right. That's right. You're right about that. It, it, yeah. it, it, it is our livelihood. 
Yeah. This is how we live. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Don't call me. Don't call me for it. And if I do lend out anything, it's grade D. Something that I ain't going to miss and get mad at you about. <laughs> understandable. Understandable. So far as that first kit that I like, the the uh the green one, you won't you won't you won't get that to me? I don't have a green one, Rod. Wrong you drummer. You remember that no, no, no. You remember that kid that I, I seen you um um at the first cl- um, drum clinic you came to? Uh you had uh the soul soul tone um shirt on. Oh man, a dear friend of mine gave me that one, man. Um, he worked with me with that. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, Yamaha Stage Custom, man. Shout out to Ray mm-hmm. Sean, man. He's a drummer for Faith Evans and Ti. No, nah, man, he got me that. Drum. You can you can go ahead and give me that one. I don't know, no, man. When I upgrade, when I play for like Mariah Carey or Alicia Keys, I will do that. Until oh, then, okay. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that, that, that's a great kit. That's my favorite kit. Um, it's so fast to set up. Um, I time myself. Oh, here's some good advice. Man, time yourself, drummers, setting up and breaking down. Casinos love to see a quick setup and breakdown. Don't take an hour. To how long, do, how long does it take you? My record is seven minutes with a full kit. Wow. <laughs> Four symbols. Um, I keep everything pre-locked, so when I pull everything out of my case, all I got to do is just loosen up the, uh, the lugs and, um, yeah, put my symbols on. Yeah, and then I'm ready to go. Yeah, wow. seven minutes, 15 minutes tops. 15 minutes tops. Seven minutes. That's amazing. That is amazing. Seven minutes. I, didn't, I haven't ever heard... Um, um, uh, over seven minutes or less than seven minutes. That's what I'm saying. What is a good oh. memory in your music career? A good memory. Oh, man, it's always the road trips, the the, uh, the traveling gigs. You know, you like I, the traveling, you like the traveling gigs? Yeah, man, I love to eat. So I used to watch the <laughs> Foodie Channel. And yeah, you know, what, whenever what, there was like friend. this... Yeah, you know, you got to go out like, you're in Philadelphia. He's like, all right, um, I got to try homegrown. Um, I got to, you know, if you're in New York, you got to get one of the hot dogs from the nearby stands. If you're in Florida, you know, get a whatever freaking pineapple freaking drink there is or something. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just like you got to touch base. Every home state got this. They're uh the signature style, Dallas, um, man, yeah, been a few places and I always go to, and there's always a hole in the wall that has the best meal ever, you know, in life. It's just like, oh, yeah, that's those are my good memories. So, do you like uh, working to, with, with click tracks? How's your um, experience with click tracks? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a clutch. It's a clutch. Man, you know, and we're just in the game age. Now like everything is digitized, the music, backing, trackings, all that kind of stuff is on a click track. Um man, to tell you the truth, man, I just I don't like playing without it. Um That's a deal. I here's tell. the reason why. Here's the reason why though. Why? Here's here's a secret. I love my artists. I love y'all, but I hate, you know, slowing down or speeding up. Gotcha. And in the middle of the song, if the trick, uh, if the click track is there, nobody gotta tell me anything. And That's right. it's all from there. It's all from there. You know, like hey, there's a beat. Up, oh, the beat's playing. Computer never lies. Bam, ha, let's go. Tick tock, tick tock, let's go. Boom. Yeah, hey, let's watch this subdivision. No, but uh, <laughs> that was a Kevin Hart moment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that just, I just love, I love playing with the backings and stuff like that. Just in case somebody forgot the hits on the horn section, the horn section's there on the backing. <laughs> uh, that's true, that's true. I just, I just love. <laughs> 
That's so true. You're acting. You're accenting with the hits, right? You know, it was like, hey, y'all forgot the hits. All right, we're going to get to the next one. Nope, back ends right there. It's going to be there. It's never going to go, it's never going to go away. It's always going to be by your side. <laughs> I true. love the text, but yeah, drummers, invest in your in-ears, dress in your own mini mixer so you can control everything. You can have the, tr- the click track louder, you know, and also sound guys love when a drummer has their own. They said, well, mix sound guys that I work with, they're like, oh, man, you got your own mixer? But yeah. It's like, cool. It's not too much noise, you know, bleeding into the lead singer's mic and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's true. But yep, have your own kick click track, your own metronome going. Have a metronome where you can tap the tempo so you're not speeding up the song halfway through, you're not dragging, right. anything like that. Um, yep. How big is Love. your kid, bro? Man, I don't. Yeah. So, only Mine because is a I, Mine is a seven piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I would say my comfortable set is ten. What? But ten. Lord knows, I want a fifteen piece. I want to have an accent snare. Uh, two accent snares. Um, I have the, uh, now my new investment, I got a drum pad. I was that guy that always loved acoustic sounds. But the drum pad's pretty healthy, um, um, handy to have. Um, three toms, you know, you have a 10, 12, 13, 14, 16, um, two crashes on the left. Two slashes, one small, one high, one ten inch. Uh, my twenty inch ride, then my accents on the side, so I have a stack china, um, similar to an ozone. Another accent symbol crash, and that's it, man. I'm I'm comfortable. I'm in pure joy right there. Wow, wow, that's amazing. So we're coming to a close in in a minute, but what what would you like to say to the world as we come to the close? What's up, Curtis Blow? I'm going to find you. No, I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't. <laughs> you remember that CD4, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I no, but, uh... <laughs> no, but, um. No, but, um. Man, what I'm going to say to the world, man, man y'all got blessed. <laughs> I don't really know. No, man, just, well, you know what? Uh, can I do a couple of plunge? Man, if y'all want to see me perform, I'm at the Cork and Thorn every Saturday with Ali Star and the Alley Cats at 70 West Imperial Avenue. <laughs> That's 70 West Imperial Avenue. Amen. Uh, shout out to Randy Tone Arms. Um, the next two Mondays, I'm like in the mid Mondays over there at, uh, Terrace Mediterranean on top of the Hustlers Club at 6,000, uh, Dean Martin Drive on the rooftop, uh, with Alley Star and the Alley Cats. Uh, my own very own creation, the Symphonics, the Symphonic City Jazz Band, Mob Museum, that's at, uh, 300 Stewart Avenue. Um, we're getting on the dates right now, management with Caesars is putting some stuff together. Um, and Sam Dollar, my boy, my sweat brother, man, me and this guy, we work hard on the stage. Uh, Kevin Tyree and NRB uh, will be forming um, Wednesday, August 1st at the Sam Dollar downtown. New one inside the awesome. plaza. Yep. So we'll be That's there. Nice. Oh, yeah, man. Man, we play... The uh, the R and B and pop and stuff like that. We doing Justin Timberlake, Filthy. You know, we. I mean, my guy Michael Pauly, uh Primo, Richard, Lewis, uh, Primo Danger. Man, these guys. I love working with these musicians because they really pay attention to the patches um, when the songs comes about. My brothers um, on the bass, Matt Seward, Percy, um, Gary Coveney. Um, percussionists uh, that I work with, Rico, um, 
piano is pianist um, Mauricio Crutcher. He's a legend. He played on that Fred Hammond album. Um, he's on the uh, Symphonic uh, City Jazz Band. Uh, wow, man! Just I'm surrounded by greatness, man. That helps me sound good too. <laughs> Let them know yeah, where. But, uh, uh, yeah. Let them know um, all your platforms that you can be reached, and then we're going to come to a close now, bro. Yeah, yeah, that platforms. I'm on Facebook, Christopher Rogers. Just a regular government name. I don't have a nickname. If you guys have any suggestions, I'll have an ear out. Um, <laughs> Instagram, Chris, spelled out regularly, um, C-H-R-I-S underscore. R O G E R S, no D, just a G. Chris Rogers, um, Drum Dad on Instagram. I got a website. Thanks, Soul Tone. Um, I've been rocking with them for years. I'm on their list and out there. If you want to learn a little bit more about myself, history, what I work at, um, artists I work with, um, it's got some things on there, some accolades. You can catch me on Soul Tone. Look up Chris Rogers, I'm on the artist list. And um, I'm not really out there like that on social media. I don't have a Twitter. Tic- uh, do I have a TikTok? I think I do. My daughter is wanting me to create one. I don't know what my TikTok name. Hang on. Stall them. Stall them. Swift. Swallow. Stall them. I got to find it. <laughs> Chris Rogers. Yeah, that's my name on TikTok. Awesome. That's it. Awesome. <laughs> so um, it says um, in Romans 8.28, and we know all things work together for our good and those who love God to those who are called. We would like to thank my mentor, Jerry Royce, live, Pubs and Power, Christian Media, LLC, for being there as a true brother and a true friend in Christ. We'd like to thank my, my little brother, Tyler Gaston, the gas station recording studio for all of my engineering works being done for this, this, this broadcast and drum clinic cut and peace and blessings to you. I like that. I like that. Join me as your host, Roger Swift, every Wednesday, Musicians Matters podcast, live right here at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Positive Power, 21 Christian Media, LLC. Let's go! You are listening to Jewish Worldwide Podcast.